to the book of Genesis chapter number 1, verses 26 through 29. I really only need a small portion of it. Dr. Russ, if you could hand me my physical Bible, please. Mm-hmm. I'm old school and new school. They said it's proven. Yeah, there we go. Oh, we rocking, we rocking. They said if you use your physical Bible, you're more likely to remember it because it's a relationship. He's not a God that cannot be touched by the feeling of your infirmities. And I don't want to idolize a Bible, but when you're touching the word, it's touching you. <laughs> I'll read some of this. This is not for great exegesis, but I'm going to read it and I'm going to download what he uploaded. Amen? Amen. Then God said, let us make human beings. This is the NLT version. You're your King James says, let us make man in our own image. To be like us, they will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals of the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. Verse 27, so God created human beings in his own image. You're made like the master. In the image of God, he created... He them, male and female, created he them. Then God blessed them. This is my emphasis. Be fruitful and multiply. Somebody shout, be fruitful. And multiply. What good is it for you to be fruitful alone if there's no multiplication? The crazy thing is I learned that sometimes God adds by subtracting. That only hits you if you have ever had to leave somebody only to add some things to your life. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he multiplies by dividing. He said, you think you need all of that, Gideon? Come here, let me divide it down. Let me divide it down. Now I can multiply Fill the earth and govern it, reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Last verse. Then God said, look, I have given you every seed-bearing plant throughout the earth, all the fruit, <laughs> trees for your food. Before I pray, I want to use for a subject, fruitful relationships. Look at somebody and say, fruitful relationships. Father, I ask you would hide me behind this cross, this sacred desk. Let me decrease while you increase. In the invincible name of Jesus, amen. You might be seated in the presence of the Lord. Maya Angelou, or some say Angelo, she was once quoted for saying, I got my own back. <laughs> she was tough. And if you know her story, when she was younger, seven or eight, she was sexually assaulted. And she told the village, the community, the man's name, who did it. And the man spent about one night in jail. After he got out of jail, the people in the community killed him. And as a child, she thought, it's my fault because I used my voice. I will never speak again. And she didn't speak until five years later, Maya Angelou. No wonder she's so powerful. I'm talking about Maya Angelou, uh, Presidential Freedom Award, Maya Angelou. 
I'm talking about one of the coldest writers, along with Hank Langston Hughes and many others, to ever grace the earth. And after reading her story, I thought about you. So I need to tell you something before we start tonight. Before we get started, I need to tell you something very, very, very important. I need you to listen clearly. Because I don't know what's trying to shut you up. Because of what you've been through. But I have a word from the Lord. You are a gift to the world. You can shout for your own self. You are tougher than most people think. You are made by God, sent by God, and God has your back. You are a winner. Oh, nobody else could have survived what you went through. The reason why you're in a class all by yourself is because some of your friends didn't even make it. Some of your relatives, some of your schoolmates, but for some reason, you are here. You're the sum total of grit, determination, discipline, desire. You are a bad somebody. You ought to be glorifying God for you. That's why you're here tonight. That's for the very reason you had to watch online. With all the things you've been through, you shouldn't even be here, but because God has favored you, you're the apple of his eye. Oh, I got to get through some Holy Ghost notes, so and we're going to work with it, baby. No devil in hell could take you out in 2022 because God has favored you. Good God Almighty, nothing could stop you from living. You are God's plan, God's dream, God's master plan. You are God's manifestation in the earth. You are bad somebody. Let me tell you something. As one of the associate pastors here, along with Pastor Rob, so let me tell you something. I have your back. I, we got your back, baby. When life takes you low, you come here because we're going to build you up. You're worth more than rubies and gold. <laughs> you don't understand what I'm saying. You're a diamond in the rough waiting to be polished. You are a champion because your circumstance di circumstances did not take you out. You are the word of God in action. You are an overcomer. I'm going to keep speaking until you just until you believe it. You are an undiscovered secret weapon in God's army. You are more than you think you are. You are more than people think you are. You are more than your supervisor said. You are more than your ex said. You are... You are more than your followers are. You are gifted and talented. Your future is brighter than the sun. You are Picasso's paintbrush. Lord, have mercy. You are, Leonard, you are Leonardo da Vinci's uh, canvas because God wants to write on you. Lord, have mercy. And when he writes on you, he wants to show you off to the world because you, baby, you a bad somebody. I'm going to shout for myself. You are one of the best designs that the earth has ever seen because nobody has your fingerprint. Nobody has your eyesight. Nobody has your IQ. Nobody has what you have on the inside of you that is yet about to bubble over and overflow because you are God's child. Lord, I had a flashback of the devil telling me I wasn't his child. Am I the only one? Am I the only one that the devil tried to convince that you, oh, you, 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 you messed up. You've done too much. God will never raise you up. And look at me standing right here right now. What? Look at you. Look at all the stuff that tried to take you out. What? Woo. Uh, let, me, let me calm down for just a moment. Ah, I believe in you. Beyond measure. But as I was praying for you this week, the Lord told me to tell you something. He's got something against you. Lord, have mercy. Am I the only one that God just causes to chastise people sometimes? God says he's got something against you. You don't seem to have your own back. Why? Because you are inconsistent in your relationships. Wait, let me say it the way I heard it in my gut. You suck at relationships. 
God keeps sending blessings and people and opportunities. And for some reason, you keep fumbling. I know it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to cut. We're going to bleed just a little bit. Keep your jacket on. Nobody will see. And for where God is about to take you, you're going to have to master the art of being fruitful in relationships. I know, I know you don't trust everybody because you've been hurt. But what God's getting ready to do in 2023 was not the old. The new is about to come. Make room. Make room. Every time God blesses you, for some reason, you have trouble ma maintaining these relationships. But don't worry. We've all been there. God sent us help tonight because he downloaded some things in my spirit to help you in your relationships. Somebody shout, why? why? First of all, this is 2023. Lord, I'm about to take off running. Y'all don't even know what I'm getting ready to tell y'all. You have no idea. This is the year of divine abundance. This is the year of supernatural favor. This is the year of laser focus. That's why Bishop is trying to get us ready with laser focus because what's getting ready to happen this year is you're getting ready to be fruitful. And every time you become fruitful, you have to be careful because there are other bees and insects that don't come to cross-pollinate you. They come to take what you have. You just think this is in your year because you're frustrated. Let me tell you something. Two, zero, two, three. Let me back it up. This is Bible study. Let me sit in it for a moment. Two is the number of agreement. Before we ever even got to, uh, uh, before we ever even got to ch uh, Genesis chapter one, verses 26, on day number one, God said, let there be light. Like, 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 like. Day number two, he separates the firmaments and the clouds. Day number three, he says, let the dry land appear. Day number four, he creates the sun, the moon, and the stars. Day number five, he creates plants and animals. On the second day, God says this spiritual number two is the number of agreement. We're in 2023. The number two represents agreement. The number zero is nothing. The number three represents a resurrection, a restoration, a renewal, a rebirthing. Walk with me for just a moment. This is 2023. In other words, God is saying, if you will agree over a nothingless situation to agree with me for a resurrection, I will do abundant things in your life. Let me slow it down for the people in the back. The number two represents agreement. The number zero is over a nothingless situation. The number three is a resurrection. Is a, come on, three days. What? What? You? You? Three days. Three days. So if you will agree over a nothingless situation, two zero to agree for resurrection, God will do abundant things in your life. And I started praying, and, I, and, and God said, "Add up the numbers: two plus zero plus two plus three equals seven. This is your year to be perfected." Is it too, can we, can we walk with it for just, this is your year of perfection. It doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. It means you're going to be growing in spiritual maturity. This is your year to accomplish your dreams. This is your year to buy houses. This is your year to start businesses. This is your year to have wealth beyond measure. This is your year of prosperity. You ought to shout for you. This is your year to help other people because you're going to have an overflow. This is your year to meet new people. This is your year to have the best year you've ever had in your life. Ah, that's why you're going to have to be laser focused to bring your best blessings to pass. My assignment tonight is to help prepare you to have fruitful relationships. And though I want to shout, and I might do a little shouting, I got to put something in your spirit. I got to talk to your head. Because for where God has taken you, the people that he sends in your life, you need to know where to put them. For where God has taken you, this, there's no time for barrenness, only fruitfulness. You had enough barren, uh, am I the only one? You had enough barren seasons, it's time for fruit. No more missed opportunities, no more failed marriages, no, no more canceling people you don't understand. No more dropping the ball because you didn't get along with somebody. We cannot be fruitful by ourselves. Even nature teaches us in order to have good relationships, we need other people. Even nature teaches us this. You've got to have intimacy. Maya Angelou said, I'll never speak again 
because the last time I spoke, my intimacy was perverted. And what God wants to do is reverse the curse. <laughs> What the enemy has been trying to do is to get you to think every time you partner with people, you're doing something wrong. Every time you find negative people and bad people and they take advantage of you, just don't trust people. People are the only thing you got. Press down, shaking together, running over. Shall men give unto your bosom? How will you be blessed unless it comes through the hand of man? I'm not saying that God doesn't supernaturally provide, but he often uses people. Now, I need you to understand that relationships are everything, and I'm almost where I need to be. But before we talk about outer relationships, can we talk about inner relationship? Every time God gets ready to elevate you, you doubt yourself. Mm -hmm. Your courage shrinks, and your confidence just sets in the basement of your soul because you don't think you're enough. For some reason, your self-worth starts diminishing because you keep thinking of all the past relationships. But Psalm 139 and 14 says, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. You ought to be telling God, marvelous are thy works. Somebody say, I look good. If you don't believe it, nobody else will. Hear me good. This is your season to begin to enjoy your relationship with yourself. The first thing we're going to do in 2023, we're going to allow ourselves to enjoy ourselves. <laughs> Let me say it another way. You have to look in the mirror and thank God for you. I want to thank me for me. I want to thank me for me. I want to thank me for succeeding. I want to thank me for coming to church. I want to thank me for keeping the job. I want to thank me for starting the business. I want to thank me for putting clothes on my back. I want, oh, you, you, oh, see, see, you, you, you praise everybody else, but do you praise you? Every now and then you, listen, <laughs> oh, old, old preacher said, listen, it's a poor dog that don't wag its own tail. We want to join you in your party, not your pouting or your pity. You teach other people how to treat you by the way you treat yourself. See, <laughs> let me tell you something. When we meet you, we step into the drama that you've created with your own mind, but we want to bless you. Have you ever wanted to just be a part of somebody's life, but they didn't think that they were good on the inside? I know, just sit with me for a moment. If you would be honest with yourself, you don't see yourself as high as you need to see yourself. And for some reason, you keep creating this movie called Low Self-Esteem, but we really wanna see you <laughs> win an Oscar on greatness and confidence and faith but it's going to come with you being fruitful first on the inside. Fix yourself up. Look at somebody say, fix yourself up. Fix yourself up. Fix yourself up work out. Listen, whatever you got to do, if you got to put on the wig, cut your hair, what do you want to do? You want to grow dreads? You need a taper. You need a fade. Fix yourself up. You don't have money to buy a suit. Go down to the thrift store. Listen, uh, listen, the young people call it thrifting. It's your season to fix you up, shine your shoes, polish up your glasses, do whatever you need to do. Iron your shirt, iron your clothes. You are a bad somebody. You got to treat you right. Take yourself out on a date. Take yourself to a vacation. Write your own book. Write your own journal. Do I have anybody that's willing to treat themselves right? Listen, I went the other day with my wife to get a pedicure. Whew. I had to do it because these dogs were barking. It felt so good. And I said to myself, as men, we don't really always take advantage of taking care of us. But then we blame you. I, I, I'll talk about that later. Then we blame you for something that we could have done ourselves. This is your year to do things yourself first. If you treat you right, everything else will come. You have to be intimate with you. 
You say, well, how am I going to be intimate with me? You need to look on the inside of you and see what is missing and be honest with yourself. You've had enough, listen, you've had enough facades for everybody else. Look deeper. And when you look deeper, fix the thing that you want. You want to lose weight? Lose weight. The first thing we're going to do in 2023 is we're going to work on our relationship with ourselves. Do I have anybody in agreement with me? The second thing we're going to do, which really is the first thing, but the, but the first taking care of yourself allows you to see God in perspective. The second thing we're going to do, we're going to be intimate with God. We're going to have a fruitful relationship with God. Sometimes we're going to preach and teach, and then other times we're going to slow it down like tonight and dig deeper into his word. This is your year to walk in spiritual maturity. This is your year to put those two or three scriptures that you know to the side and learn more. No, no, no. This is the year to fall on your face and say, God, I need more of you. God, if you bless Moses in Exodus to raise his staff, maybe you can bless me to have a team of co-workers. Maybe you can bless me to have a team of employees. If you bless Joshua to walk in the Jordan and the waters will come up, maybe you're blessing the soul. Everywhere the sole of my foot would tread, you're going to give it to me. No, it's time for you to dig deeper in God's word. You're facing discouragement. You're, 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 you're afraid. You need to pull Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Somebody's coming against you. You need to pull out Psalm 28. You're my fortress. You're my buckler. You're my shield. What? You feel like hiding? You, you, you feel like hiding because the enemy's coming at you? Psalm 46. You're my refuge. What? You need to be quoting word day after day after day. And some of you need stuff now. You need to pull Psalm 70. Make haste, make haste, make haste. Deliver me now, God. Do I have any word seekers in here? You need to pull Psalm 20. Lord, the, the, the God of Jacob, hear me in the day of trouble. You're going to face some trouble, and you need to know how to call the Scripture and put it in context. You're trying to buy property. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof in Psalm 24. No, no, come on, walk with me. Psalm 25, unto thee will I lift up my soul unto thee. You lifting up your soul to everybody else. Lift up your soul unto God. You ought to be pulling Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth with sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. We fast forward, and he shall be like a tree planted. Oh, God. By water. Water. Bringing forth his seed in his season. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drive through. You need to be quoting this word, Psalm 2. Why do the heathen rage? In other words, God, why do I have so many haters and enemies? But if you read Psalm 2, David is saying, I don't know why my enemies keep tripping because God's going to bless me anyway. You need to pull Psalm 3. Lord, how are they increased that trouble be? It doesn't matter because it seemed like my haters had babies and they had a family reunion and they all try to come against me. But it doesn't matter because God's got my back. You need to be able to pull Psalm 4 and Psalm 5. Hear me, O oh God. Attend to my cry. You need to understand Psalm 6. Don't, don't rebuke me in your anger. God says, I'm not mad at you. I'm pushing you along. I'm allowing the furnace and the heat till you go in the direction that I told you to go. Every time you run into heat, sometimes it's God saying, hold up, back up. You don't have me. Have you, oh God. Have you ever tried to go in a pathway where God wasn't there? You think I'm lost, but I'm talking about your intimacy with God. Let me pull Psalm 7. In thee will I put my trust. Let me pull Psalm 8. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. It's time for your praise and worship to go to a whole nother level. You've been saying the same old thank you, Jesus, and glory, hallelujah. Some of you need to be running around the church. Some of you need to start jumping. Some of you need to start fasting. Some of you need to say, God, I thank you. Your praise needs to activate itself. Psalm 9 says, oh God, I'll praise you with my whole heart. You've been praising God, but it hadn't been with your whole heart. So let me pull, so, okay, uh, y'all uh, uh, gonna have to pull me back because I done gotten this thing now. Psalm 10, Lord, why do you stand so far off for times of trouble? When Psalm 10 is saying that, what it's saying is God says, I'm stepping back because that's my boy. That's my girl. I believe in you. I'm standing back over here because I got trust and faith that you're going to do what I told Don't don't take God's absence 
for the lack of his presence. <laughs> it may feel like God is absent, but he is all, he's a very present help. Oh, there's a text. In the time of trouble. Psalm 12, help Lord for the godly man seek the faithful fellow among the children of men. Psalm 13, how long, oh God? Some of you say, how long? What is going to happen? How long? How long? How long? God says, when I say it's time, no devil in hell can stop it. When God says it's time, wait a minute, I think it's time, 2023. This is a year for you to agree over nothing in the situation, to agree for a resurrection. It's time. I dare you to shout, it's time. It's time for you to get in this word. It's time for you to fast. It's time for you to read. It's time for you. I, 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 I just see it. I see it. I see God waking you, some of you up at 4 and 5 in the morning. And you keep hitting the alarm. And you keep trying to go back to sleep. No, no, no. God is calling you. He's pulling you closer. He's pulling you deeper. He's saying, I need you to go deeper into my word. I need you to go deeper into who I am. Because you've been using the same few scriptures. And you're wondering why you have no power. And you worried about the world. Psalm 14 says, the fool have said in his heart that there is no God. Those, those are fools. They'll, they'll, they'll repent in a minute. Psalm 15, listen, who, who, who shall join in, your, in the holy hill of God? Hey, wait a minute, hold up. Who shall abide in the tabernacle? Who has clean hands and a pure heart? Psalm 16, preserve me, O oh God, Lord. I was like, Lord, God. Oh, God, I hate to use this illustration. I don't know if you've ever seen uh, Pukki on New Jack City, but just, the word just be calling me. Just be calling me. I try to quit every time I get Just be calling me. Because because every time I stand up, something comes on the inside of me because I have been intimate with God. When you're intimate with God, it's going to show. It is going to show. Even David sees the coming of the crucifixion. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Psalm 22. When you get to Psalm 23, this is what I said when I met my wife. The Lord is my shepherd and I see what I want. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, that was for the single people. Psalm 30, install thee, O Lord. Psalm 29, worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Am I losing you? We okay? Because when you start reading Psalms and Proverbs and you tag team, nothing shall be impossible for you. But you've got to do the work. You've got to have your own back by going in God's word and realizing that he's got your back. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. And then the text says, the voice, it says, the voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars of Kadesh. Well, Kadesh was a wilderness. The voice of the Lord is walking in the wilderness. In other words, God said, you're not in nothing that my voice won't go through. You've not gotten yourself locked up, tied up, tangled up into nothing that my voice won't speak. He said, come here, girl. Come here, boy. You know you're better than that. Come here. Come on, come on back to church. Come on and repent. Because God is calling you. And then you've done so many different things wrong. And you got to remember, I, I, I better stop because I'll be quoting the, the, the whole book. It just, it just, let me tell you something. I've been through so much H-E double hockey sticks in my life that I had to depend on nothing but the word of God. So when you see me get up and start quoting these scriptures, it's because I was crying and reading. I was fasting and reading. I was confused and reading. But God allowed me to be intimate in his word. Psalm 31 says, in thee will I put my trust. Psalm 32 says, blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven. Listen, God has forgiven you, but have you forgiven you? Psalm 33 says, rejoice. Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at, and his shall be a, my soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. See, the old church, see, uh, see the old church, people would have took, listen, you, people would have took off running. They would have been jumping and shouting because we got to get back to rejoicing as a family. Some of you are facing immeasurable court situations, and you need to pull Psalm 35. Plead my cause, oh God. I, I, I don't, Psalm 30, listen, my, my mouth, Psalm 36 and 30, just, just, if you just keep my mouth, oh God. Psalm 37, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious of the workers of iniquity. They're going to soon be cut down like the green grass. See, you need to read scriptures that other people don't quote. If you just quote the same scripture, you need to know that no weapon formed against you shall be able to. And that's also in Isaiah 54 and 17. And you need to understand that Israel was in a backslidden state. And God had to remind him, no weapon formed against you. No enemy trying to hold you in bondage. We're talking about fruitful relationships. You want to be fruitful with yourself by first treating yourself right, and then you want to be intimate with God.
You will have no fruit without intimacy. The blessings that you're going to see come to pass this year are going to be the gross product of your prayer life. The people that come your way and bless you and open doors for you is going to be because your praise was on steroids. You've got to be intimate with God. I'm not saying you need to know all 31,102 verses, but I'm just crazy to believe him. I'm not saying that you need to know that Genesis has 38,826 words. I'm just trying to tell you that I want to get to know the master. I'm not telling you that you got to know that the book of Revelation has 11,982 words. I'm just trying to get to know the master. I want to know everything about him. Everything. I want to know the next 19,000 words in the book of John. I want to know the master. I want to know the 24,250 words in the book of Acts. I want to know the master. I want to know the 24 chapters of the book of Luke. And, and, he, and, and she, they touched the hem of his garment. I, I want to know. Oh, God. Anybody want to know him? I, I, oh, God, it's getting good to me. Lord, easy E, I hear you in my spirit. I'm getting high off my own supply. I got, I got so much other stuff to tell you. But, oh, God, you need to understand that the 28 chapters of the book of Matthew, so-and-so begat, so-and-so begat, so-and-so begat, so-and-so, because it's talking about the genealogy, and it's speaking to the Jews, because the Jews are saying, where, where, where your mom and them from? Where your dad and them from? Because your legacy has a heritage. And some of you don't like your families, but we're going to deal with that because God's telling you to dig deeper. Dig deeper. Some of your family members, you're going to lead to the Lord, but you got to dig deeper. You got to dig deeper. Some of your family members, you're going to have to uh, repent yourself because you've done some wrong too, and you're going to have to forgive. You got to have deep. You're going to have to dig deeper, 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 deeper. Well, I'm out here now. The book of Mark, 16 chapters, using 40 plus words like straightway and immediately Jesus did this and that. In other words, it doesn't take a long time for God to bless you. He said straightway, immediately, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. See, you've been praying the same old prayer and you've been walking away doubting, but this is not a season for you to even pray about some things you've already prayed about. It's a season for you to just believe and walk into it. Let me, let me show you something. I invest a little bit, I study a little bit, and I noticed with the Dow Jones, S&P 500, Russell 2000, and so many others, I noticed that when the stock market goes down, <gasps> let me put my money up. Anybody ever been there? Don't lie, spirit of prophecy gonna come. And you wanna pull your money out. So one person says, I'm losing everything. So they cash out their stocks for 10% of what it could have been worth if they just waited. But another person said, I lost a little money today, but you know what? Everything's on sale and it's gonna go back up. You need to know that it's your season of going up and everything that you put in the ground is coming back up. Who am I talking to? Matthew 5, <laughs> it just keep calling me. Matthew 5 and 6 is hunger and thirst for righteousness, and then you're going to be filled. The fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5, 22. I'm sorry, it may seem like we are scattered, but we are going somewhere because we're talking about being fruitful in relationships. And if we don't pause and take time to talk about your intimacy with God, nothing else will work. What good is it you gain the whole world and you lose your soul? Your will, your mind, and your emotions set toward God. Psalm, uh, excuse me, Galatians 5 and 22 and 23 says, the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace, meekness, goodness, temperance, long-suffering, faith, meekness. Against such there is no law. God is saying, if you get intimate with me, the fruit that you will produce will be nothing but blessings. So we talked about you being intimate. First of all, believing that yourself, believing in yourself, seeing yourself better than you are. Number two, the most important thing is our relationship with God. Because when God is the boss, that takes stress off me. Oh, I got it. I got it now. That's what I just saw in the, you know what I just saw in the spirit? Some of you are afraid to proclaim and name things and prophesy things because you think you got to cover for God. 
God said, you don't have to cover for me. Just stand on my word and believe me. And when it comes to pass, every doubter, every naysayer, everybody that talked about you, everybody that said you were a fool, let me tell you something. You're going to be blessed and highly favored. Now, we do real good when it comes to God. And some of you treat yourselves real good. But when it comes to this relationships with people, this eros, this love relationships, we're seeing divorce 50, 55% in the church. And we're seeing that we don't really understand each other. And God was talking to me this week, and he said, I need you to slow it down, and I need you to talk to my people and break down some basic things, and God downloaded some things to me. Can I have my gift, please, if you would place it here? First of all, you are a gift. Somebody say, I am a gift. And I started playing with these illustrations and looking at them and thinking of them, how many single people do we have here? Don't be mad, because you say, make some noise. Are you? Stand up if you're single. That's it. I know that's right. Some of you are not going to be found if you, if you don't stand up. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How many married folk do we have? Would you please stand? Yeah. I like the shouting section over there. Some of y'all act like y'all married and mad. Come on now. <laughs> and the problem is, one of the reasons that we're not as fruitful is that we don't understand basics of men and women. And so, as a reminder, I wanted to talk to you tonight I got some great gifts in here if I can find them. Yeah. I started looking at the breakdown of relationships. And we're seeing a lot of women who really don't understand men. And I want to break this down as simple as possible. Men are like apples. You have to bite and bite. And, uh, an apple is juicy, but you have to bite and bite and bite until you get to the core. The sisters know what I'm talking about. You've been with him for months and years, and you keep finding secrets that he didn't expose to you because he kept them at his core. The brother's not going to back me up. Because we figure we only got a few seeds inside so we keep them to ourselves until we trust a woman who is able to handle it. The thing that's missing off this apple is a stem. For the single sisters and a lot of married women as well, what you have to understand is that the apple has a larger stem. That stem is a connection to the branch. That stem, to me, represents the father. And because you don't know his relationship with his father or his past relationship with his father, whoever raised him, you don't understand him. If you want to understand it, can I, can, I, can I give our secrets away? Brothers, can I give our secrets away? Sisters, if you want to understand a man, check the stem. Did his father stay? Did his father leave? What's keeping me from discovering the inside of the core? You don't believe it at the core. Let me, let me show you something. I started to bring a knife out here, but security would have beat me up. I cut this apple open, and at the core, you will see seeds. Amazing. You can eat all around the apple and not see a seed until you hit the dead center. And some of you in this room have been with men who've been dragging you along. Lord, did I, I just... For months and years, and you don't have any direction. 
because you don't know what is at his core and he is hiding his core for a reason. Why doesn't he feel safe with you? Jesus. Yeah, the quiet, the potter's house is at his best when you're listening. What's the reason that he's not sharing with you his real visions and dreams? Has your mouth backed it away? Uh, don't be mad at me. I'm going to get to the sisters in a minute, but let me just, I'm going to get to the brothers in a minute. Let me just talk, let me talk right now, because let me tell you something. At this core are the deepest secrets, but it's also the deepest dreams. This apple has seeds on the inside, not the outside. <laughs> this, this skin, it's, it's really smooth. And you say, he got an attitude. He just, ah. Uh, Ah, because he's got a thin layer before somebody gets to him. That's quiet. The, some of the brothers are like, no, don't say no more. Don't say no more. Because what good is it for God to bless you if you don't understand people that you're going to be around? And, and I thought that it was over. And then the Lord said, look at this. This is a, when, when I scan this price tag, this sticker, it tells me how much the apple is worth. And what you don't realize, sisters, is that the last woman put a label on how much she was worth. And because she put a label on how much she was worth, how far he could go, she didn't push him like you can push him. That's why he's keeping his dark secrets at his core. Because somebody labeled him something. But with the same mouth that sometimes you don't mean to, you over talk, you can use to build up. Because in order to get to the core, you've got to change the price tag. If I was really biting this apple and cutting it up, you wouldn't be able to see the sticker on the outside. Because it's not about the outside. You need to see the potential on the inside. Now, brothers, it's not that every woman over talks or so has a bad mouth. Sometimes we don't value ourselves like we need to. Sometimes we have placed the very sticker on us that we say is her mouth. Is it her mouth or is it your reflection of what you think about yourself? Is it her mouth or is it you comparing yourself to other men? Is it your mouth? Oh, oh, brothers, oh, don't, are y'all going to leave me out here? Brothers, make some noise if I'm telling the truth. Yeah. Or you can make some noise if you're mad at me as well, but I'm going to tell it anyway. But I can't stop there because... And this, mm, yeah, to me, women are like oranges. I'm going to work it out, brothers. I'm going to work it out. Sisters, if I start, whoo, if you bite into an orange, what happens? The citrus comes out. And you wonder why her emotions are springing forth but you bit something, you hit something, you disrespected her, you downed her, you let her on. I'm sorry. If we're going to be fruitful in relationships, we have to understand that women are like oranges. They have a hole around them. The hole is a little bit thicker than the skin on the apple because the hole is more protective. That's why she's protective. She has to feel safety, comfort, and security. With the men, if you don't feel honor, nobility, and respect, then you don't open up. Well, with the woman, if she doesn't feel safe, she's got a hole around her. Now, you're mad because she's not choosing you, but you've done nothing to peel the hole. 
Now, let me straighten this out a little bit because you got to be careful, sisters, because some brothers who are no good for you, they're peeling, they're peeling, they're peeling. They're trying to take your hole off. You got to be careful who you let peel you. And this citrus emotion comes out every time, every time you bite into it, every time you open it up. You cannot open an orange without your fingers turning white. It's going to come out. It's going to come out. We speak peace in every situation. It's going to come out. It's gonna, why is it going to come out? Because this hole is for protection. Sisters, don't open up to men too easily. Make him work for it. A real man is a hunter. A real man is a chaser. Stop choosing men. It's his job to choose you. It's his job to find you. Give him something to work for. Because we like goals as men. Build me a house. Take me on a date. You have to begin to set goals for yourself. But if you open up your hole too easily and let him peel you, he will disrespect you. Men, we're not the only ones who don't like to be disrespected. Now, here's, here's the thing about an orange. This orange, if I were to open it up, it's different than an apple. You don't believe? Let, let me show you. Let me show you something here. You know how I know it's different? Because the orange has slices. Uh-huh. I'm going to work this. The orange has slices. Now, I just cut down the middle of a slice so you can see it. This is why one brother can damage you and another new man come along and you a brand new woman because he didn't see your value. Have you, Yeah, it, let me let it sink in. One man can treat you one way and you feel depressed, you feel down. Who am I talking to? Come on. You ever had a bad relationship? You ever had a bad breakup? He didn't see your value. He didn't see your self-worth. But let me tell you something. An orange is different than an apple. Typically, the orange has sleet, seeds in different slices. In other words, one brother can take one slice, but you got, oh, you got a whole nother slice. Never let what he did to you break you because you got a whole nother slice. There's a whole nother woman in you. There's a whole nother girl in you. There's a whole nother vision in you. He had you thinking you were down, you were fat, you were ugly, but all of a sudden another man, come on, say, one man's trash is another man's treasure. What? Fine as you are. What? He did what? Come here, girl. Because you got seeds in every slice. Never underestimate the beauty of who you are. And this is our season to cross-pollinate. We're just slowing it down a little bit this year. And when you have an apple, it's open, and an orange. Before I go to marriage, let me slow down for the single people. Marriage is not always the goal. Mm -mm. It's not the goal. Intimacy is the goal. Marriage is ministry in hiding. It doesn't mean that every couple will preach or teach, but what it does mean is that the person you connect with, you're supposed to minister to the world with. We are all, they say, why well, I'm talking to you about Bible, for, we are all ministers of reconciliation. The word minister means to serve. So God is connecting you to be married to somebody to serve the world and to give him glory. So be careful for connecting with somebody because he's handsome or she's fine because y'all look good together because you can make a lot of money together. No, no, no. This has to be purpose as well. Now, brothers, I know that we are very visual, and we like to look to see how that orange is going to look. But I've seen the prettiest women in the world break a strong man's heart. And on the, on the contrary, I've seen strong, solid brothers with a lot of money 
dog you out, step over you, and not see your value and your self-worth. When you take this orange, I can't prove this, excuse me, when you take this orange and when you take this apple, I can't prove it, but as I was studying, they believe this fruit came from South Philippines, Southeast Asia. They believe it was the first time that they started discovering. To me, an orange and an apple mixed together looks like a mango. Y'all hungry, aren't you? <laughs> it's got a little bit of red, a little bit of green, a little bit of orange, because there are green apples and there are red apples. To me, the mango is like a cross-pollination of an apple and an orange. To me, what the mango represents is the family coming together. An orange and an apple have about 10 seeds. The orange has seeds in it, different slices, so you can slice it through, you can see sleeves in different slices. And the apple has seeds at its core, but the mango, it's got one seed on the inside. Where my married people at? If you're not on one accord with your spouse, what good is the marriage? You're thinking one thing, he's thinking something else. You're thinking one thing, she's thinking something else. And you're wondering why the kids are in disarray because this cross-pollination causes for one seed. If I were to open this mango, you would see a seed, and inside of that seed is a seed. If you open a mango, there is a seed. And if you open that seed up, there is a seed on the inside of that seed. In other words, if you cover your family, you will produce on the inside of your family and it will translate to other generations. It's about purpose, destiny, and legacy. Purpose is why God created you. Destiny is what you're supposed to be walking into, what you're supposed to be doing with that purpose. And legacy is what you leave to the next generation. The mango is a prime example of the seed on the inside of the seed. Is this making sense to you? But we can't just stop at men and women. Because men and women, they come from families. The family is similar to a mango. Marriage is similar to a mango. And I thought about the family. And for some reason, the family reminded me of a carrot. Y'all say, what are you going to do with this? <laughs> the carrot, if you study it, has strong composites of vitamin A, which helps the eyesight. Come on, you ever seen Bugs Bunny? And I said, God, why would you tell me to talk to them about a carrot? And he said, tell them to stop forsaking their families for the new people that they meet. You allowed him to pull you away from your family. You allowed her to control you. And now you and your mother and your father are on, on one accord because your family is your eyesight and your insight. Let me say it another way. Your family can recognize drama at the door. That's why the devil wants you to be mad at your family. That's why the devil wants broken relationships with you and your family. You know why he wants that? So that there's no eyesight and insight into the relationships. Sisters, if your father is living, if your father's not living, find an uncle, find a big brother, find a pastor, Run that man by your father, your uncle, or your pastor. Let somebody else see him. Y'all mad about it? You have no idea on how many people connected with people that their families never even met. But then when they got in trouble and the relationship didn't work, now you coming back home. Now, mama, he broke my heart. Daddy, but they were trying to tell you all the time, I, I see something. Be careful. 
because when your family sees something, I need you to go and pray about that and put a pause on it. It might be delayed and not denied, but I need you to hold still and hold steady because for some reason, your family sees something. We talk about fruitful relationships. Does that make sense to you? Now, if you can get me Proverbs 11 and 29, I want to read that. Proverbs 11 and 29. Proverbs 11 and 29 says, those who bring trouble on their families inherit the wind. This is your family, this good eyesight, this bag of carrots. You let this nice hunk come through. He's the best thing you've ever had for three weeks. Three weeks. Oh, I had the best time of my life. It's three weeks. Man, I think she's a one. It's three weeks. It's three weeks. You will inherit the wind if you bring trouble on your family. You need to know these scriptures. That's why we talk about being intimate with God and studying his word. In other words, the people that you bring into your family sometimes can cause mayhem. You think it's just about you and your relationship or getting married, but when you marry single people, listen to me carefully, you are marrying intermingling families together. There is no coming back for that, from that. If you can get me Proverbs 27 and 6, I want to read something to you. We talk about you being, believing yourself believing in yourself, seeing yourself higher. We talk about you being intimate with God. Anybody want to still be intimate with God? We talk about knowing the basics of men and women, according to fruit. <laughs> and then we talked about family, because your family is your what? Eyesight. You're a smart crowd, because they help you see. It, I want to, let me tell on tell your families just for a little bit. Some of your families and your fathers and mothers, they won't tell you everything that happened in their past, but they see it when it's coming. So you think you're wise because you never saw it, but they're actually wise because they see things that you weren't exposed to. Now we're going to go from families. I got a couple of more and we're going to try to wrap this up. I need to talk to you about friends. If you're watching online, stay with us. Proverbs 27 and 6 says, the wounds from a silent friend are better than many kisses from the enemy. The wounds of a friend, but you've been looking for friends who don't wound you. Mm. I said, God, how, how am I going to make break this down? He said, I need you to use a tomato. See, a tomato, you either like it or you hate it. Raise your hand if you don't like tomatoes. Yeah. Yeah, y'all the new crowd. Y'all the new crowd. That old crowd. Boy, if you don't eat that food that I put on your plate. Make some noise if you like tomatoes. You either like them or you hate them. Some of you are gonna have some friends you like, some of you have, uh, you like, uh, uh. But tomatoes have to be sliced to be used. Very rarely do I see people just eating tomatoes. In this country, you can put salt and pepper on it, you can do some other things, right? Tomatoes typically are sliced before they're put on a hamburger. And the reason you slice this is because you're trying to get to the core nutrients of the tomato. Most people, any y'all don't really like that top part of the tomato. You like, you throw that away or the bottom part. But it's the middle that you're trying to get to. In this season, in order for you to be fruitful with your friends, you're going to have to see who they really are. Stop calling everybody your friend that you haven't cut yet or that hasn't cut you. Oh, y'all were the best of friends until trouble hit. You were the best of the friends until you had to address a real issue. 
You're the best of friends until somebody came against you. You're the best of friends until somebody talked to your friend about you and your friend didn't stand up for you. You're like, whoa, whoa, are we really friends? You were the best of friends until your friend pulled you aside and said, hey, I don't really think that that was cool. You were really wrong. A real friend will cut you. A real friend will wound you. A real friend, if I cut this tomato, it's going to be so juicy. Because a real friend has an impact and an impression on you that you cannot forget. I'm talking about a real friend. Not these fair weather friends we have. Friends like tomatoes. There's a cut. Two more things I need to talk to you about. Co-workers and colleagues. Somebody said, talk to me. I had an argument today in the cubicle. <laughs> We're talking about fruitful, fruitful relationships. Now, to me, I'm trying to wrap this up. To me, friends, well, friends are like tomatoes, but coworkers and colleagues, they're really either strawberries or lemons. Oh, yeah, we're going to work this tonight. The co-workers that are lemons. <laughs> ah. Here we go. We're back. It's 2023. We're back. How was your vacation? How was your time off? Here's I. Lemon. Sour face. But those co-workers sometimes are the realists. They really exhibit what you feel on the inside but are not willing to express. And so lemons are like coworkers because these lemons also have to be sliced. Now, how many of you just eat lemons? You just pick up a lemon and just eat it. Your mouth will just be on fire. It's, it's a few, few, few of us, but, but not, not many. Because lemons, when you squeeze them, they create lemonade when they're mixed with a little sugar. This is your season to find coworkers and colleagues who treat you mean and throw a little sugar on them and watch them turn into lemonade. Because they're really just hurt, frustrated, or mad about something. When God, <laughs> listen, when God created Adam and Eve, we don't see the coworkers come in because they weren't supposed to work. We're like, is this a part of the curse? What is this? What is this? I'm going to tie it back into the text in just a moment. Because lemons are sour. Your coworkers are either sour or they're what? They're sour or they're sweet. Now, I can't open these strawberries because if I do, it's just... I said I can't... Mm, mm. Mm. Oh, God. You watching online? Ho hold on just a moment. Just. Mm. 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 Mm -mm -mm. Your coworkers are either sour or they're sweet. But I need to warn you that these sweet coworkers that are real sweet, at the top, there's a bitter part of this strawberry. Oh, they're so sweet because you work with them from nine to five, but you don't see them on the weekend and after six. That's why some of them block you on Instagram and Facebook because they don't want you to know their real life. Is this making sense to you? Your coworkers and colleagues, you're gonna have to figure out who's sour and who's sweet, and you're gonna have to cross-pollinate the two. Because you just don't need sweet people. Enough sweets will make you sick. You just don't need sour people. You're going to have to be able to bring these people together in order to get your vision accomplished in relationships. Does that make sense? The last and final thing I believe I want to talk to you about, a couple of things here, your clients and your customers. How many of you believe in God for business this year? 
I'm telling you, I believe that this is a year that you open up your LLC. I believe that this is a year that you start an S Corp, a C Corp. I believe that this is a year that you go from sole proprietorship and DBA to joint ventures. I believe that this is the year for you to connect with people who are going somewhere. I believe that this is the year for you to have prosperity and abundance. I believe that this is really the year for you to open up real estate. I believe that this is a year for you to have clients and customers around the world. I believe that this is a year that your business begins to explode. I believe that this is a year that some of you are going to quit your jobs. I believe that this is a year some of you are going to retire. I believe that this is the year for abundant favor and wealth to come to you. Oh, shout if it's your year. But there's a few things you got to understand. Coworkers and clients, they're like bananas. The reason they're like bananas is because they have to be peeled. Nobody, typically, no one eats a banana's whole. You don't just start eating it. You have to open it up. And for some of you, you're going to have to step out on faith and open the business. You're going to have to step out on faith and open up your vulnerability to say, hey, I do hair. Hey, I do eye eyelashes. Hey, I sell T-shirts. Hey, I'm into real estate. Hey, I sell shoes. Hey, I sell clothes. You're going to have to open up who you are. Many of you have been keeping that dream and that vision to the side and it's closed. And nobody understands that this is your ripe season because you've not opened up the opportunity. You're going to have to peel back the opportunity. I got a million other things to talk. I don't even have the time to talk to you about these grapes because these grapes are the sweet people and the sweet things that God's going to send your way. And when God sends a lot of sweet things your way, be careful. Be careful. These grapes look good, don't they? I see your eyes. Some security work with me because some of them want to tackle me. They're hungry. They came straight from work. The reason why you like these grapes, because you know you'll bite into them and that juice just come. Ooh, it's, it's juicy, huh? Would y'all be mad if I ate one? I washed these before I left home. Give me just a moment. Mm. 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 Let me get let me get just one more. You know what these grapes represent? You're gonna get sweet things, but sometimes there's a crushing. These grapes have to be crushed to create wine. It won't just be easy peasy this 2023 year. That's why we had to slow down the service and just talk to your heart and to your mind because there's gotta be some squeezing, some crushing, and some crunching. And I noticed when I ate the grape, on the inside it was a slight seed, but it was edible. <laughs> oh, it was edible. Oh, it was good. Oh, yeah, it was, it was real. It was real good. And the reason why you'll easily eat these grapes, because they look good on the outside and they taste good on the inside. But I got to warn you, God may send some kiwis your way. What do kiwis represent? Kiwis are the brothers that look broke, but on the inside, they got a whole lot of seeds and finances. Where my single people at? Some of you pass over good men because you don't spend time enough to open up the inside. Some of you brothers say you're looking for your wife, but you didn't find her because you didn't take the time to allow her to feel safe and secure so she didn't open up to you and you didn't realize that if I open this kiwi up, it looks juicy, it looks great. On the outside, this is burry, looks bad, looks ugly, but on the inside, it's juicy. What is God telling you to open up? Some of you to other people look like you were the outside of this kiwi, but on the inside, you were juicy. Y'all say, what in the world does this have to do with Genesis chapter number one? When God told them to be fruitful and multiply, what he was telling them is, I've already put a seed on the inside of you that needs to be multiplied. And when you cross-pollinate, 
and understand that your relationship first of all has to be fruitful with me, then I will explode. The problem is the serpent says, hey, have, listen, hey, did God say you can't eat it? She says, no, no, what God did, we can't, uh, we can't eat it. Well, God said, well, he, and he said, it's not that you, no, 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 you're not going to die. You're going to be as little gods. Now watch this as I close. She says, it was good for food, lust of the flesh. It was good to the eye, lust of the eye. She desired it to make one wise, pride of life. Anything that's going to trip you up this year is going to come in one of those three areas. It's going to be the lust of the flesh. This looks so good. It's going to be the lust of the eye. I need to, this looks good, lust of the flesh, I need to have it. Oh, you know what? I can make a lot of money. It's going to be, it's going to make me look good and feel good. This is not about money and manifestation. This is about your calling and destiny. Money always follows ministry. Stop asking God for money where there's no ministry. That's why I told you they're all, that we're all ministers of reconciliation. When God says be fruitful and multiply, he gave a commandment for you to have a great relationship for everything you come in contact with. John 12 and 24 says, Jesus said, unless a grain of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abides alone. Last thing I'll tell you, we're going to go home. In order for you to receive everything I talked about in 2023, you're going to have to die to yourself. So that the relationship with God lives, the relationship with your friends live, the relationship, oh, you can praise him, the, the, the relationship with your family lives, the relationship with your coworkers, the relationship with you. And on the old rugged cross one Friday night, they hung him high and they stretched him wide. They pierced him in between the metal tarsal spaces of his foot. They pierced him in between the radius and the corpus bones because the prophecy said in order for this to be a spotless lamb, no bones could be broken. They begin to groove the railroad side spikes through, through his radius and his corpus. In between, in between the spaces, it didn't hit the bone. And then all of a sudden, they had a nerve to pierce him in the side. Blood and water is coming out. They put a crown of thorns on his head. Historian Josephus says some 360 grams. And, and he suffered asphyxia, a type of hyperbolic shock, a type of asthma. He says, I thirst for somebody to understand that I want to be in fruitful relationships with my son. I want to be in fruitful relationships with my daughter. I want to produce fruit. So even Jesus says... Eli, Eli, lava sabbatani. My God, why is thou forsaking me? And he died. He died until the sun refused to shine. He died until, oh God, until dead men were seen walking the streets of Jerusalem. He died until people didn't understand what was happening. He died until Mary said, that's my baby. That's my baby. But he looks down on the cross and John says, woman, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother. Because says, I'm willing to die in order to have a relationship with you. Oh, I thought this was about fruitful relationships and making money and manifestation. This has been about Jesus the whole time. Jesus is the number one perfect example of having a fruitful relationship because he died and it was about a seed being sown into the ground. That's why you're here tonight. You ought to praise him. That's why you are standing. That's why you're safe. That's why you got pulled out of the pit of hell. That's why you're no longer strung out. That's why you're no longer alcoholic. That's why something is calling you at night. That's why you couldn't click off. That's what it's coming from. It's coming from the seed of the, oh God, it's coming from the seed, the seed of Abraham. It's coming from the seed. It's coming from the root of Jesse. It's not even about any of this fruit. It's about the fruit of the Holy Ghost. No wonder Jesus said, I'm going to be a seed planted into the ground. And then later, this true vine, he says, I'm going to go away. And this fruit of the Spirit is going to come with the Holy Spirit. And all thy getting, get an understanding. This year, you are going to have fruitful relationships. First with the master. Yeah, let's give him glory. You're going to have a better vision of yourself. You're going to have a better relationship with your Bible. And as we close, you, I don't know who I'm talking to, some of you, Go meet the man of your dreams this year. Some of you, you're going to find the woman you've been looking for who really appreciates your hard work and sweat equity. 
and you are going to create a family. And for those of you who've been struggling at work, you want to quit, you want to collapse, you like the job, but you don't like the people. God's going to show you how to take the sour and mix it with the sweet. God's going to take that banana type anointing and show you how to open up who you really are and create endless wealth. Because when you open these banana type customers and clients, God's going to show you that that's the reason you couldn't get along with your job anyway. It was never about the job. You are a corporation yourself. You are a Fortune 500 company. You are a stock in a mutual fund to be invested into. But he says, first, I had to get your opinion of yourself higher than what it was. So Maya Angelou says, I got my own back. Because there are going to be some times this year where you're going to feel like nobody has your back. And you're going to have to say, what are you going to say? What you going to say? What you going to say? And when you say you've got your own back, the fruit first is coming with your relationship with God. And it's going to overflow everywhere else. <clears throat> then we say the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and goodness and temperance. Everybody's standing. That's what he gave me, fruitful relationships. Mm. I hope you realize that you're a gift. You're a gift that's just unwrapped. It's gonna take the right person to unwrap and unravel who you are, but you could help by valuing yourself. This brief moment is for those who feel like they don't even have a seed. I want to pray for people as we close who don't even feel like they have a seed. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we've got plenty of elders and ministers to pray with you because you don't even qualify for the blessing to be fruitful unless you first receive the seed of God's Word and unless you first accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Last thing, I would just want to pray for people who feel seedless. If I've done my job, you don't feel seedless. But I want to make sure that we are covered. Some of you will never see the apple the same again. <laughs> You'll never see the orange the same again. You'll never see the grape or the banana the same again. Or the mango. I didn't even get to the blueberries. The blueberries are the people and the friends that you're going to need to surround yourself with. Who speak to your mind. These blueberries are small, but they help your brain. You're going to have to meet new friends, meet new people. Communication is key, sender and receiver. I didn't dig deep enough into communication tonight. You're going to have to learn how to communicate with people who are not like you because God wants to bless you this year. This is your year. This is your year. This is your year of abundance. This is your year to have fruitful relationships this is your year father I've given your people what you told me
Help us to be fruitful with you first, God. Help us to see ourselves on a deeper level that you put so much on the inside of us that if we really plant ourselves into the gifts and talents that you've given us, we'd be like my angel and said, I got my own back because I know or we know that you've got our back. I pray that the right relationships bud and flourish. I pray that the wrong relationships will be cast off and to the side. We give you the glory for allowing us to step over into another year. And God, we thank you for a supernatural abundance of favor and blessings and supernatural prosperity. God, we thank you that some of us will become soul winners this year. We will lead new people to Christ. That some of us will become business owners. That some of us will become greater seed sowers. That some of us will walk into the full manifestation of visions and prophecies that were spoken over our lives for years and years and years to come. Help us to be fruitful. We surrender ourselves to you, and we start the first Wednesday of this year off with the praise and glory, giving you honor for fruitful relationships. Come on, give him glory. We're going to be fruitful this year.